Good morning. This is the first segment of section 2.2. Uh, just a quick uh, note, uh, generally, um, most semesters anyways, uh, I will end the material for the first unit uh, at, the, at the end of this um, section. Uh, it's a relatively short section. I mean, we already have most of the, the, the material, uh, the, the background material to be able to um, construct uh, the, the exact values of trigonometric functions for um, what are called the special angles. Uh, and that's any multiple of 30 degrees or any multiple of 45 degrees. Um, at some point, we'll look at how to, how to move beyond that. But for the, for the next um, several chapters, this is pretty much um, the last of it. Uh, so in the meantime, um, we will, we're going to introduce this idea of what's called a reference angle. And then we're going to use a combination of both the reference angle and the mnemonic for the SIGNs of trig functions in different quadrants to produce um, the, the, the exact values of all these trigonometric functions. And then I'm going to look at um, maybe a couple of uh, you know quick examples because there's not a whole lot of uh, application. It's just you know it's it's more memorization and practice. So uh, without further ado, let me um, let me jump over here to the document camera, which I think may have shifted from the last time I was using it. So let's do a little manipulation here, but um, yeah, we're kind of out of whack. So, um, so here's the first idea is um, we've got, uh, we want to introduce this concept of a, um, of a reference angle. And um, basically, uh, let me just, um, let me just start by a, a, a sort of carefully crafted definition here. So we'll call this the reference angle. So for every angle theta, so theta could have any value you can imagine. Um, and uh, let's make sure it's in standard position. There exists a positive angle, a positive acute angle, which we'll call theta prime, formed by the terminal side. by the terminal side of theta and either the positive or negative x-axis. So what does this say? Well, in quadrant one, this is if theta is in quadrant one, this is pretty simple. This is kind of what we've already already said that you can, if you have an angle, no matter what its measure, uh, you can always find an angle uh, that's between zero and 360 degrees. If that angle happens to be between zero and 90, well, then there's really nothing to do here. The the um, the initial side of theta prime will be uh, will be the positive x-axis. And the terminal side will be the terminal side of, of theta. In quadrant two, on the other hand, um, you'll those will actually flip roles. You'll have uh, the terminal side of theta will be the initial side of theta prime, and then the terminal side of theta prime will actually be the negative x-axis. So maybe if I give just sort of a, a quick little picture. So let's imagine. I think quadrant two will be enough to make it make sense. So suppose that um, suppose that this is theta. Now it might have wound, it might be measured back with, uh, clockwise, so it's negative. It might have gone around the, the origin 16 times. It doesn't make any difference. Um, but here will be theta prime. And we'll just, for simplicity's sake, we'll call this theta. 
So in this particular context, um, let's say, you know, more or less theta is equal to its measure is, uh, let's say that's 160 degrees, right? Now for uh, the kind of the trick here is, and it's not really a big issue, but theta prime is not necessarily in standard position. And that's kind of what gets a little bit weird about this. But the reality is, is that the use of this concept of theta prime is just, uh, it's just in order, it, just to be able to um, uh, find these, these values in other quadrants. So um, in this particular case, theta prime would be 20 degrees. So as long as your as long as your angle it doesn't have a bunch of windings and it's positively measured, you can come up with some pretty simple rules to figure out like how to measure, how to find theta prime. But uh, let, let's just assume for a second that theta is in quadrant, it is a positive angle between zero and 360 degrees. So how do we find the reference angle, uh, say in <clears throat> quadrant one through four? So if uh, let's say if uh, zero uh, theta 360 and we'll put uh, theta in Q1 then theta prime is equal to theta right so this is just kind of this is not telling us any new information uh, if theta is in quadrant two then you find theta prime by subtracting theta from 180 degrees. If you're in quadrant three, <clears throat> then um, you kind of reverse it there. The, um, the reference angle is found by subtracting 180 degrees from theta. And then finally, if theta is in quadrant four, then uh, theta prime is found by subtract is actually the here for this the exponentiary angle. Um, it's a uh, you subtract uh, the angle from 360 degrees. So <clears throat> here's here's kind of the um, the system for doing this. But this is not a super complicated idea. Um, anyways, <clears throat> it turns out that um, there's an interesting property between the trigonometric functions of a reference angle and the trigonometric function of the angle itself. And uh, that's, that's what we're going to exploit here. So section 2.2, page number two now, I believe. Okay, so <clears throat> here's kind of a, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this statement. Uh, let, let, before we get there, let's, let's try um, finding a reference angle. So, so for example, let's uh, let, Alpha equal minus uh, 63 degrees, <clears throat> find the reference angle. Now this is just a little bit beyond what we did before because notice alpha is not between zero and 360 degrees. Um, but if we wanna think about what this looks like, right? Uh, it's about a 63 degree angle measured um, sort of this way counterclockwise or clockwise, right? So alpha equals negative 63. It turns out that the reference angle alpha prime is just the positive version of that, right? Because <clears throat> this, uh, the, the roles of the initial and terminal side would reverse. Um, so in this case, alpha prime is equal to uh, the negative of alpha, which happens to be equal to 63 degrees. Um, how about another one? Maybe one that's a little bit simpler. You nail this. Well, how about uh, beta equal 883 degrees? Find the reference angle. And I'm using some shorthand here. Um, so how would we do this one? Well, okay, let's let's kind of draw the the sort of picture. Um, first off, we'd kind of want to figure out what what quadrant it's in. Um, so uh, if you can't if you can't do it on the fly, you could just say, all right, well, how about I know that this is a, a, an angle greater than 360 degrees, so maybe I'll just subtract 360 from it, and I still have an angle that's greater than 360 degrees, and so I'm left with 163. So this is uh, 883 is coterminal to an angle 
uh, a measure with a measure of 163 degrees. And we know that that's actually in quadrant two. So we've got twice around the circle and then uh, once more. So if I kind of try to draw, it may get a little messy here, but one, two, there's beta. Okay, but by finding this, this angle that's coterminal, 163 degrees, I can use that formula that I just sort of wrote down. So beta prime will be equal to, uh, let's see, let's maybe do some algebra here. Beta minus 720 degrees, right? That's the, the coterminal angle. But then if you remember, um, we were subtracting it from 180 degrees. Right, maybe this, I'm making this a little more complicated than I need to, uh, because beta prime is going to be equal to 180 degrees minus 163 degrees, which is just equal to 17 degrees. So that's, um, you'll see some exercises like that in the homework, but they're not, try not to make them too complicated. It really is just sort of a simple task of, okay, you need to find the reference angle. And we're not even really gonna be too concerned about reference angles with these weird sorts of numbers in them. Um, so uh, just one thing to note, um, according to the way this is defined, um, for, any, uh, for any angle theta, um, theta prime is unique, which means that there isn't more than one reference angle. You can't measure it a different way and get a different number. Um, I don't know that that's a, a particularly relevant statement, but it does. Um, so this means that it is the reference angle as opposed to a reference angle. Sometimes the distinction matters in mathematics, but like I said, we don't really need to worry about that too much. Okay, so here's, um, here's sort of a quick statement about uh, what we know about reference angles. And this, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna try to prove this, but I'm just gonna simply state it. And that is that, um, let me just get kind of set up here. So since the reference angle is always uh, an acute angle, right? We're not dealing with things where it's quadrant angles because we already know all the trig values of those. But if you are, um, uh, if you're, if you're, um, uh, if you're if you're taking the trig function of a an acute angle, we know that the SIGN is always going to be positive. So um, what we can say is, and I'm going to use sort of an abstract idea rather than writing a specific trig function. And I do this often. I'll just say any trig function of a reference angle. Now note this is going to be a positive number because a reference angle is always an acute angle, and every trig function is positive for an acute angle. This will be equal to the absolute value of the trig function of the, of the angle in question. So the reference angles is kind of a specialized version of the angle and this equality holds. Now, why is this important? Well, so basically what this is saying is if you can calculate the reference angle for, um, if you can calculate the reference angle for an angle, you know that the, um, at least, at least in magnitude, that the trig function of that angle is going to be equal to the trig function of the reference angle, the associated reference angle, and that the only difference between the two might be an SIG in difference. So that's why we did all that mnemonic business to figure out what the SIG in stuff was. So let me, let me show you how we can apply that. Now remember, we know the basic trig functions of angles of, well, any quadrant angle, but 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees, right? So what happens if we wanted to find the trig function of a value in say quadrant two? So let's take, for example, um, suppose theta equals, uh, let's make it 150 degrees, okay? So 150 degrees, um, then what can we say about the, um, what can we say about the reference angle? So um, notice that's going to be quadrant two, and if you look back at the rule, it says you're supposed to subtract this number from 180 degrees. So we've got theta prime is equal to 30 degrees. So if you say, if, um, let's 
let's say, let's find, I don't know, say sine of theta and cotangent of theta, okay? So coming back to this, in order to find, um, in order to find the, um, the value of say sine of 150 degrees, we can apply this, this sort of rule. We need to know what the SIGN of sine is. So I'll just go ahead and write that down here. So sine of 150 degrees, we'll notice 150 degrees is in quadrant two. And my mnemonic says it's all students take classes. So in quadrant two, we know that sine and cosecant are positive and all others are negative. So as I'm trying to do this, I'm gonna just say, okay, well, that's a negative sine and then whatever the sine of the reference angle is. Now, as you recall, we know what the sine of 30 degrees is. It's, uh, it's one half. So this results in sine of 150. Oh, sorry, I messed this up. All, this should be positive because it's in quadrant two, apologize. Um, and so the, the sine of 150 degrees is one half. Let's do it for cotangent. Um, now, cotangent is a little bit more challenging because we didn't spend a whole lot of time memorizing the, the co-functions. But um, if you recall, uh, cotangent of 150 degrees, now because that's cotangent in quadrant two is negative, here's where we get my negative sign. I kind of ran ahead of myself. So it's negative cotangent of 30 degrees. And if you remember what cotangent of 30 degrees is, great. But if you don't remember what it is, you can always say, well, that's equal to one over, I'll go ahead and bring the negative sign out, one over the tangent of 30 degrees. And you know, if you don't, if you don't remember this real carefully, I mean, you can go back and you can draw a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we've got, uh, let's see, this is a square root of three, one, two, and um, this would be 30 degrees. So you've got one over uh, uh, square root of three. And one over one over square root of three is actually square root of three. So we end up with negative square root of three. So um, you could do this with a, with a variety of uh, angles. Uh, you know, any, anything that now is any multiple of 90 degrees, which of course is your quadrant angles, uh, anything that's a multiple of 30 degrees, which some of those are quadrant angles, but some of them look like these, uh, or anything that's a multiple of 45. Um, so uh, if we have time, I may go back and, and kind of uh, summarize them, but that's in the book. You know, you can look at the entire chart of all these values. Now, from a practical standpoint, what I'm going to suggest to people is that just like with, these, uh, with this other situation, that you, um, that you, you get some flashcards, and memorize the values of all of these trig functions for degrees that are plus up to, but not including, um, let me just maybe state it here, suggest memorizing all trig values of theta between um, negative, not, not including though, negative 360 degrees and 360 degrees. I mean, certainly there might be a problem that goes beyond that, but I think this is a good range um, where theta is a multiple of 30 degrees or 45 degrees. Okay, that's just a recommendation of of how to how to be successful at least at this part in this course. So um, now this is this is going to be kind of a little bit um, strange, um, but uh, there are some like really kind of bizarre sorts of equations in the uh, in the homework that are not the terribly exciting. But uh, what I'll do is I, I this video is getting a little bit long, so I will stop here and then I'll come back <clears throat> and um, we'll we'll run through some. Uh, we'll, we'll run through some examples of maybe, you know, some equations that we might be able to use. So I'll see you here again. Real